Welcome to part five of our financial statements video training. In this video, we introduce the remaining non-current or long-term asset classifications, namely intangible assets and other assets. Please print the PDF handout shown below this video as it will be used throughout the training. Okay, now we're gonna to go to intangible assets. Intangible means not physical, we can't touch it, right? So intangible means not tangible. And it uh, would have to have been purchased for us to list it here. Again, because of the cost principle. The accountant's cost principle says re record assets at their cost. So for example, if we develop the trade name accountingcoach.com, and that domain name and the name itself is worth a ton, uh, I can't list it on my balance sheet for accounting coach because we didn't spend anything to buy that name. 12 bucks for the domain name purchase perhaps and it's a few hundred to uh, get the trademark, but that's it. So the most I could show is a couple hundred bucks. Now, and I may have just expensed that initially or wrote it off by now, so I may have no cost there for uh, the uh, trade name of accountingcoach.com. And it might be the most valuable asset that I own. But cost principle says you show what your cost is, not what you think it's worth. We're getting into subjectivity. Who would know what it's worth? You know, all over the map, right? Nobody would know. Okay, say, now goodwill is another example we list here. Goodwill is uh, something that occurs when a company buys another company. So let's say I bought uh, a coffee shop in my hometown, in a strip mall. So they, the person that operates that rents the space, and they want out of the coffee shop business. And I want to buy it. So I say, I'll buy your business. And they'll say, fine. Here's the price, $30,000. You can buy my coffee shop. I say, well, what do I all get for the $30,000? And they say, well, you get this espresso machine. You get these tables and chairs. and silverware and the stuff in the cabinets and the display counter and a cash register and that's about it. You can't have the building because I don't own the building. That I'm just selling you the business, right? So if I pay 30000 for that business, where do I put that on my balance sheet? And I look at those tangible assets I bought, the used counter, the used cash register, the used everything, and I'd say $5,000 maybe is the value. So I assign 5000 to all those pieces of equipment and then later depreciate those. And the difference between the 5000 of fair value for those tangible assets and the 30000 I paid, that difference of 25000 is called goodwill. And I put that goodwill on my balance sheet. So that would occur, a goodwill would occur only if you purchase another item. But the trade names and mailing lists might come up more often if you purchase them though. You gotta purchase them for them to be on here. So you don't have goodwill unless you bought another business and you don't have anything on this line trade names unless you bought a trade name. If I just develop my own trade name, it ain't on there. Right? So again, on, on trademarks, uh, for example, Coca-Cola developed that logo you know, decades ago. And so that logo is probably the most valuable asset Coca-Cola has and their formula. But that logo all around the world means, oh, I'm gonna buy a Coca-Cola product. Right? So that's probably their most valuable asset, but I bet it's not on their balance sheet because it probably got started in the first half of the 20th century sometimes, somewhere in the early 1900s or something. They probably developed that logo. Nike's little swish is uh, very valuable, but they didn't buy that from anybody. Right? They had a contest, I understand, at a college and some a young lady at college got a little stipend for coming up with that suggestion and they bought it. And, uh, now that's probably worth billions of dollars, right? but you won't see it on their balance sheet. Right? So again, it's the cost principle right? and objectivity, etc. cetera. Would, would a patent be an intangible mm -hmm. asset? Yes. So you record your costs for filing and getting the patent? Mm -hmm. Yes. So Question the here. research that went into getting right. the patent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Okay. So the question is, is a patent an intangible asset? Absolutely, but you can only put down the cost of the patent. And so you know, the cost of filing and whatever had to do preliminary work uh, would, would go on here. Uh, and any 
cost to defend your patent, I think you can add to this. So if you spend a million to defend it, that's another cost of the patent. Now your research and development that you spent uh, developing that,